So to continue, uh, you know, this is really just scratching the surface of everything you guys are working on. Uh, the next thing that is more recent is Summon. What is Summon? Right. So Summon's another project uh, from within ADAO. Because um, like I said, ADAO is an open source community, uh, right? We incentivize this open source work with governance over ADAO um, and ADA. Um, but there's no business plan, right? This is for projects um, to build products around, right? Use this code. Um, it's the infrastructure we all need. Uh, so Summon, like a lot of other projects, is uh, a lot of contributors to ADAO um, building a platform on top of things like Agora and all this open source uh, on-chain work that we've done. So is it like the commercial arm for ADAO in the same way that, you know, IOG is the commercial arm for Cardano where they develop the code? Yeah, exactly. A lot of people describe it like that. And I think um, it's important that, you know, we do a lot of research and do a lot of uh, experimenting almost with these organizational structures, right? DAOs, their limits today um, are legal jurisdictions, right? Laws mm -hmm. that apply. Um, so really, you know, setting the ground rules for that is really important. And, and yeah, we definitely have taken inspiration from the way that, you know, Cardano Foundation and like you said, IOG uh, have begun to do that. Yeah. So how does Summon fit into the ADAO ecosystem? How do they collide? Yeah, well, they work together well because um, anything needed for Summon or any other DAO platform uh, has been built out by ADAO, right? So, you know, it's the same developers that have been collaborating with other teams like Liquid Labs, M Labs, and building this infrastructure. Uh, so we know it very well. Um, and we've been really building this along the way. Uh, so they, they collaborate very well with each other. Um, it also gives us this giant group of, you know, they're more than advisors, right? It's these DAOs that not only have a say in Summon because they hold the governance token, um, but are act actively contributing to it. So now we can incentivize uh, more open source work, even with Summon, uh, the same way ADAO is doing it. Okay. You know, um, do the core missions and goals of Summon align with ADAO? Or are you guys building out different features? You know, what is the core mission of Summon really to start? And then how does that align with the core mission of ADAO? Right. No, they align beautifully. Um, and that's, like I said, right, ADAO, um, it builds open source work. And the way that it benefits is by people valuing, valuing that, right, just as much as they do. So with, you know, companies like Summon um, or DAOs, like the Summon DAO, uh, you know, them needing ADAO and valuing this open source work uh, is a revolving door, right? It's mm -hmm. beneficial for both and the, and the wider ecosystem. So how far along is Summon, you know, with those goals? Because, you know, I, I first heard about it in consensus, right? You know, so where are you guys at? Yeah, no, we're ready for DAOs on Cardano. We've been doing a lot of testing on Testnet, um, you know, talking to other groups that are actively building DAOs. Um, like Snapgorilla, right? Making sure that what we're doing on Testnet works for them, um, getting the feedback. And uh, so we're planning to launch Q4, um, but we just started the ISPO. Um, we're gonna do the public community sale uh, in August, August 15th. So, so we're ready, we're really excited. Um, we've been working a long time, so it feels like time. So the ISO is already going on right now? Uh, it starts tomorrow, actually. It starts tomorrow. And okay. it's hosted by the ADAO stake pool. So if you delegate to the ADAO pool, ADAO, um, you will, starting tomorrow, earn summon tokens. Awesome. What is the fee percentage? It's 99. 99. So okay. we're going to do our best to work with other stake pool operators uh, to offer summon tokens not only through the ADAO pool. Um, I know you know, we saw last year, like when ISPOs became a thing. Um, there was a lot of concerns because it can very much centralize stake. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important, like, you know, there's a lot of token distribution platforms popping up, a lot of stake pool operators that they want to offer things other than ADA to their delegates. Uh, so yeah, working with those stake pool operators to offer summon tokens through their pools too, I think is really important if we're going to have a successful ISPO. Yeah, I would agree with that. And 
you know, I think, uh, you know, from a selfish standpoint, it's still good for summon because you guys are bringing in, you know, more users, you know, more users have your token, your DAO's more decentralized because you right. spread those tokens among thousands of users instead of just the delegates to a DAO. Um, you guys also mentioned that you have a public sale coming up soon. What's the date on that? And, you know, really, what does it entail you know, yeah. for the user? So it's, it's August 15th. Um, we're actually going to split it up into three events. Um, but starting August 15th, uh, anyone in the Cardano community with a Cardano wallet um, can go to the site, um, connect their wallet, and participate. Uh, we actually, you know, today are going to announce that uh, we created a non-custodial smart contract system, uh, not only for the sale, but to open source um, for any development teams um, and to offer through Summon. Uh, so that's what we're going to be using um, in the first event is going to be pretty cool because we quote unquote gated it, but it's something everybody in the ecosystem probably has, which is um, either one ADAO token, one min swap token, or one liquid token. So if you have one of those in your participating wallet, you'll be able to uh, agree to terms, connect your wallet, and participate in Summon token sale. Awesome. Is there going to be a staking portal through Summon, or is that more of an ADAO thing? Yeah, so the ADAO, ADAO will always have its own staking portal, um, whether it hosts it how it does now or through Summon. Um, but what Summon will offer is for any project to just create their own with no code, right? So right now, if developers wanted to create a staking portal, they can go to the ADAO GitHub, come in the server, figure out how to do it, right? Create yeah. their own interface. Um, but through Summon, they'll be able to just set it up with a few clicks and have their own project staking portal. And, you know, that project staking portal, is that going to be through the Summon application or can that be on, you know, the existing project's website? Right. So that's a really good question. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to work with communities like ADAO, right? Because you need to think about things like this and how we're storing data. Uh, so no, Summon uh, won't gate a project in, right, to using their interface. So they'll be able to plug in. Uh, to the back end, right, to the contracts um, and use the summon stack to host things on their interface. Awesome. I mean, you just mentioned uh, a very useful feature for many projects that I didn't even know that you guys were going to include. And it, it made me realize that we should dive into this features a little bit more. You know, let's say, you know, summon it, it's built. What features does that offer to projects similar to how they can create a staking portal and allow their users to stake? What other features and values, you know, are projects going to be able to, you know, receive and utilize, uh, you know, summon for? Right. Um, so really everything, right? As project creators, right, you'll be able to uh, mint a token uh, or use an existing policy, mm -hmm. uh, set up your parameters for governance. Um, there's a lot of parameters, right? Uh, you need to decide on things like what makes a proposal valid. Um, what gets it to the voting stage, uh, how are effects executed. Um, so quite a bit. Um, and as users, um, you'll be able to easily see and interact with all these DAOs, right? You'll be able to see all the DAOs, uh, see wh where their tokens are, uh, see how many there are, see what proposals are live, what people are talking about, discussing. <clears throat> um, and, and, you know, my favorite is like, what are these effect modules, right? So. So as projects, we have treasuries. Um, and a lot of times what we'll do is we'll delegate that to a stake pool, use it for things like pledge to create a stake pool, uh, put it into uh, positions in DeFi. Uh, so be being able to leverage that through the platform uh, and then vote on those things and have them automatically executed um, is I think what's going to be most exciting. And that's something that you know, we can build as new protocols come and new uh, strategies, uh, you know, get invented. Awesome. You know, earlier when we were talking about the ISO, you mentioned that you're actually going to be doing, or not the ISO, the uh, public sale. You mm -hmm. mentioned that you're going to be doing this through a smart contract. Right. Um, you know, can American users, you know, participate in this sale? Well, so I am not an attorney. We have a very great attorney in Summon, uh, but there are terms in service, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you can go to the website, you can read through that, um, but you have to, you know, 
you have to take responsibility and check with your own jurisdiction because they are all different. Yeah. Um, Summon Association is operated out of Switzerland, just like Cardano Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so it shouldn't be an issue, but you do have to check with your local jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's great advice for most things. You know, you should check with your own accountant. You should check with your own, you know, lawyer. Uh, before you make any financial decisions, because as he mentioned, all of these jurisdictions are different. And, you know, a lot of time crypto is in a gray area and, you know, these laws aren't written out and you need to find somebody uh, who really understands them very well because they change very often. So be careful when participating in anything, you know, whether it be a public sale or ISO relative to the jurisdiction that you're in, because you don't want to hurt yourself, you know. Um, so, you know, moving forward, do you guys have any plans for, you know, summon cross chain? In the future. Um, you know, a lot of side chains are building on Cardano. Mm -hmm. Um, we've already seen Mulcomeda, um, we're seeing things like Orbis. Uh, so yeah, uh, we definitely work with these teams, talk to them, um, and are, you know, excited about building cross chain DAOs. Um, so that's definitely in the future. Awesome. So speaking more about the summon token, you know, what utility do users receive from the, the summon token itself? Right. So the summon token is um, a true governance token. Um, so the same tools that summon offers um, will be used to govern the summon DAO, the platform itself. Um, so users will be able to uh, do everything right from adjust parameters of the platform, right? Um, fees. So you know, that's the beauty of, you know, these tools we're building. Uh, these tokens can automatically be used for governance. And you don't have to trust uh, a human, like I said, who can make human error, be untrustworthy to carry them out. So can any user, you know, that say buys up summon tokens, can they, you know, submit a proposal as far as you know, the direction uh, in the future of the application? 